Welcome to another episode of The Pursuit of Coconuts. My name is Poland, and we are building a social enterprise to fight corruption, food insecurity, and support farmers. On this episode, we are fine-tuning our aquaponic system. For some time, I was being carried and supported by my consultant, Aaron, and now we are going to try to test things and learn things and learn how to walk on our own. From sprouting seeds to crop selection and even the fish selection, we are trying everything out to see what is going to be the best for yield and for profits. We had to decide which crops we wanted to plant. So here's the dilemma. We can plant the local stuff and get local prices and we possibly can be competing against other farmers. But we know that there is a need and a demand for the crops. Another idea would be because Bohol brings in tons of tourists and there's hotels and restaurants. We have an option to choose and source out a variety of vegetables and possibly fruits that we can grow in the aquaponic system that is rare over here. And I know we would garner immediate attention and demand. The problem is, or should I say the catch is, we would be trying a new variety of fruits and vegetables that are not familiar here in the Philippines, which could possibly mean learning a whole new set of varieties that we are not familiar with. There is risk and there is reward, and I have yet decided on what to do. So for now, we're planting what we have access to that's really easy and what we can get from the LGU and the local markets for seeds and we are just filling up the planters with whatever we can and also training the kids the farmers and our crew on what and how this thing works all right we're a couple weeks away from our grand blessing and so this is going towards the end of january and we've got everybody working check it out we've got the coconut guy cleaning up all the coconut trees I can't believe it. He's an older guy and he's climbed about 15 trees now. And he's cutting little footholds, cleaning up the leaves and cutting coconuts off the trees that are in areas where people might hang out so it's not dangerous. We got the farm that we're tending to. We got tomatoes, eggplants, peppers. We've got over 2,000 fish in this pond. And we had a scare this Sunday with the nitrates going up, but we took care of that with the third pond. So we've got one, two, three ponds. We've got the shed being created we got my wife cheryl picking out pretty light fixtures and kind of dreaming what this place is going to look like transplanted eggplants growing and they're doing well uh, we've got our cistern tank waterproof we got to finish the top of that we've got our fourth pond dug framed out uh, the posts on the building that is going to be there 2024 is going to be a big year um, but pretty much the aquaponic farm on this side is ready to be processed, grow some fish, grow some vegetables and go to market finally. So we're looking good. So far, the best vegetables that we have been growing are the bell peppers, which don't look like the American bell peppers. They're a lot smaller and look more like large jalapenos, but they are bell peppers. The cucumbers did amazing. The kangkong, which is the watercress, did amazing. The tomatoes did really well. The ones that did not do well was the cantaloupe melons those kept on bursting and that might have been from the heat of the rock and romaine lettuce was a tricky one we were very hopeful we put seeds in the planters the planters grew the seeds out to little itty bitty plants and we were able to transplant them and they were looking really good this was at the tail end of the rainy season moving into the hot season and dry season and after they started to grow that's when disaster happened later on you'll see they bolted got really tall, got bitter, so it had to be used in dishes that we would have to cook the romaine lettuce a little bit more or just feed it to the pigs. So thankfully, this is not lost. We could still eat our romaine lettuce, um, even though they bolted. Uh, it's unfortunate that they did, but we are new farmers um, and we're learning along the way and, and we still get to have the food and enjoy the food of our labors. Now for the fish, the best selection that we were able to start off with was tilapia. It's very abundant here and very easy to access. The feed is easy to get, so that's what we started with, and we added a bunch of small fries in there. 
It's about three weeks in and they've gotten to be about two to three inches. And I think they're growing well, but not as fast as I thought they were going to grow. And that might be because the oxygen is just from the circulation. We haven't started turning on the Venturi pumps as often. Another thing that I'm going to find out is probably because our first batch of fish gave birth to a bunch of other fish. There might be a little overcrowding, whatever it might be. I was hoping that within three months that we would be able to harvest the fish. Another selection of fish that we have is called African Hitho, which is a catfish that is very durable and tastes really yummy and easy to handle. We purchased about 500 of those and those really, really were small also. Now the unique thing about these guys is that they will eat each other unless they're a certain size. So at the beginning, you actually have to separate them and you have to keep monitoring them and almost about every week you have to separate the small ones from the large ones and they will attack and eat each other up and they're very, very aggressive. The tilapia goes for about 120 per kilo and that's wholesale cost. And the catfish goes for about 200. And you almost add about 60 to 70% on the price for retail. And the catfish is more durable and they're growing a lot faster in our aquaponic system and i think they are going to be less sensitive to the space and it just depends on how much we feed them also the oxygen doesn't affect them as much because they can go up to the surface of the water and take good breaths and that means the water even if it's high in nitrates won't affect them as much just because they don't need to have water running through their gills all the time so they are the safer fish and also may fetch a higher price on the market now the other flip side to that is a lot of people in Bohol are not yet familiar with the african heat fill so there's not a regular part of their diet whereas the tilapia is very common you'll see them selling them on motorcycles at the fish market or even on the street vendors you'll see lots of tilapia and rarely do you see the catfish you'll see them in the supermarkets or people growing them in their own yards so to commercialize it would be another step of the process of getting all this commercialized so not only are we learning aquaponics and how to farm it we're also learning about the market of the fruits and vegetables and the fish and then we can make a decision on what we're going to grow i kind of made a decision on what i'm going to grow and i'll share that with you on the next video just because we have something unique going on so to be able to share that with you would be awesome and that time will come i'm just in the process of developing some things that i can't yet share so another fine tuning that we have to figure out is how many times we cycle, how much oxygen is needed. So why does that matter? Because electricity costs money and everything needs to be balanced and figured out. But of course, we can't sell anything if it dies. So we have to run the electricity. We just want to make sure that we're doing it at a very conservative and affordable pace. This is my dude, JM. Not only did I meet him on the jiu-jitsu mats, but he actually has a family business that is a construction supply store. And the fun part is I'm doing a lot of these custom off builds and trying to figure things out step by step. And to have somebody who knows the local material willing to help source things out, help brainstorm on how to do things has just been a lifesaver. So along with all the farming, the work does not stop on the construction. We're working on the supply shed. We're going to be putting a fence around the perimeter and that's going to be pretty unique. What we're doing with that fence is we're going to just do a regular hog wire fence and we're using just rebar stakes to put it in place tying the hog wire and what we're hoping actually is that at every post we're going to be planting a plant called madre de cacao this special plant is used by local tribes to repel insects and we're going to use it as a perimeter around the property we are going to plant it at every stake and in between also but for now at every stake and once the fence deteriorates and rusts out and hopefully that happens within a four or five years we'll have multiple madre de cacaos about every 10 feet away from each other It'll be dual purpose. It'll be a living fence. It'll also help repel some of the insects and mites that might be in the area. As the farm is getting fine tuned, the animals coming into this place, the plants growing, the fish trying to figure each other out while the catfish are devouring one another and fighting and everything is slowly coming together and we are learning so much. 
So in the next episode, we're going to show you what is to come and maybe we'll talk a little bit more about how this is going to monetize and the numbers on this. Not only do we have the farm, but we're going to do collaborations with other farms to create some really cool stuff soon to come. So thank you for following The Pursuit of Coconuts. Your follow, your like, and your support means the world as we try to fight corruption and food insecurity in the Philippines here as we take you along on the ride of us building a global social enterprise. And thank you for our sponsors, the Van Dystique Foundation, the Uplift Foundation, Will McQuinding, uh, a lot of individuals that have contributed, the Ung family, uh, which is my parents and my brother. They actually are big contributors. Also, uh, my aunt, uh, the Long family, the Shore family, the Fieldhouse family, Cormiers, the uh, Moros, the Velocins. Um, there's just so much support and love out there, the Joe Ung and his family, and so much more. I know I'm going to forget some, but thank you for all the support, all the local people here. Fred and Joan from Fox and the Firefly, uh, the network that they've exposed us to, the local LGU who have given us plants and uh, have supported the projects. There is just, the list goes on and on. And to imagine that we're all bonded together to support local agriculture and low income farmers to prosper. So thank you guys. All this hard work is gonna pay off because of you. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. It means the world and we'll see you on the next.